feast of the Holy Virgin Mary, as you accepted her purity and the fervor of her love, make us acceptable for your holy purpose. <coughs> the more we resemble her, <coughs> the more your name shall be blessed and honored now and forever.
for the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior, announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke, who proclaimed life to the world. Let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. Remain silent, O listeners, for the Holy Gospel is about to be proclaimed to you. Listen in glory and thanks to the word of the living God. The evangelist Luke writes. While Jesus was speaking, a woman from the crowd called out and said to him, Blessed is the womb that carried you, and the breast at which you were nursed. And he replied, Rather blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. While still more people gathered in the crowd, he said to them, This generation is an evil generation. It seeks a sign, but no sign shall be given to it, except the sign of Jonah. Just as Jonah became a sign to the Ninevites, so shall the Son of Man be to this generation. At the judgment, the Queen of the South shall rise with the men of this generation, and she will condemn them, because she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And yet, there is something greater than Solomon here. At the judgment, the men of Nineveh shall arise with this generation and condemn it, because at the preaching of Jonah, they repented. And yet, there is something greater than Jonah here. This is the truth, peace be with you. For the priesthood being translated, it is necessary that a translation of the law also be made. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The epistle chosen for today is from chapter 7 of the letter to the Hebrews. And it's quite surprising. In fact, the Gospel is also surprising because we have no reference to the Blessed Virgin Mary directly here. In either of these readings, it's why. When we look at the epistle, it's all about this chapter 7 is St. Paul is giving six different reasons why Jesus Christ is not only priest, but the fulfillment of all priesthood, and his priesthood is unique and eternal. Now, when we speak about priesthood, it's important to understand the basic idea of priesthood. The word priesthood in English actually means elders from the Greek. But the priesthood itself means that ability before God to separate, consecrate, and offer before the divinity. That's all it means. So that in the time of the patriarch, what St. Paul is saying is that when the law changes, when the priesthood changes, in other words, the officiating ability to sanctify and offer to God, to make holy, when that changes, so does what's translated here as law. But in the Old Testament, the word is Torah. And Torah actually means instruction or teaching. We translate it as law because it has directives in the teaching. But it's not law like a civil code. It's a teaching 
which therefore has an action and an attitude which follows from it, in its basic understanding. So for example, in the time of the patriarchs, when Abraham was alive, for Abraham, as well as even for the pagan people around him, priesthood was exercised by the father and the family. He blessed his children, he was able to bless the meals, the crops. He was part of, he was that aspect of what we call priesthood. He was the one who consecrated and blessed before God. When it comes to the time of the establishment of the priesthood of Aaron, as mentioned in chapter 7 to the Hebrews, that's an establishment by God from the law of Mount Sinai, from the Torah of Mount Sinai. And that clearly has a whole tra transition of instruction from the patriarchs of the time of Abraham, centuries before, to now a whole new instruction and a new priesthood. And with Aaron, you take a tribe, one of the great clans of the 12 tribes of Israel, the tribe of Levi. And that tribe is given to take care of the things of God around the temple, the tabernacle in the beginning of the tent, and in the temple. And within the tribe of Levi, there is the family of Aaron. And Aaron is the brother of Moses. So Moses also is a Levite. And of this establishment, the descendants, the sons coming down from Aaron generation after generation down to the time of our Lord, and in fact down even to this day, as I've mentioned to you several times, whenever you meet a Jewish person whose last name is Cohen, that family is claiming descendant directly from Aaron. And because the Cohen just means priest. In Aramaic, Kono. Hebrew, Kohen. And so with that aspect, what our Lord is saying is that we now have a translation. Because remember, he explained to the Hebrew converts why this new religion established, this new fulfillment of the law of Mount Sinai is so important. And so he's speaking about our Lord's priesthood and therefore the change of a new instruction. Now, what he does in this chapter is he gives references to our Lord's resurrection. That his entrance before God eternally is the establishment of his ability to consecrate, to sanctify, to redeem eternally. And so as a result, as he says, the translation of the priesthood brings about also a transition of instruction, the gospel. And so he's giving reasonings throughout chapter 7 specifically to Jewish people. Converts who are having a hard time because of the persecutions that had been unleashed on them in that generation following the martyrdom of St. Stephen. So the question becomes, why do we have this epistle chosen for the Immaculate Conception? We have to remember that our Lord as priest is as man, as God, in a sense he's the one who receives these consecrations and this ability and these offerings. It's our Lord as God and man, man, as fully man, who has this ability to intercede for all other human beings before God, to consecrate them, to offer sacrifice. And remember, the word sacrifice doesn't mean slit a goat's throat. Sacrifice literally means sacrum facere, to make sacred, to make holy. And that idea then of this priesthood of our Lord is what he has because he is man. And so in his resurrection, his priesthood is established eternally in that divine glory at the right hand of the Father, as we say in the Creed, every single day. So again, why do we have this about priesthood? Well, of course, our Lord is man because of his decision to enter into time by birth through Mary of Nazareth. And we have to remember that in the Immaculate Conception, what we celebrate is the creation of this woman who is the beginning of the new creation because of this work of redemption of God. That when God decides to enter time from all eternity in the divine word, he chooses it to enter time also, if you want telescoping, the choice of this woman. Because he chooses to enter time as a child. 
He chooses to enter time as any other human being. And in doing so, Mary of Nazareth is chosen in the exact same eternal decision to bring about the redemption and glorification of the world. And therefore, what we celebrate today is the creation of this woman. If you look in the Fekito, the blue books again, you'll notice that in the Masmuro, the second verse, that the promises to the mother of the mother of God, to Saint Anne, that they have been fulfilled and that I shall place enmity between you and the woman's offspring. That's a promise hearkening back to Genesis and to Paradise, in which after the fall, God tells the serpent, God tells the devil, I shall place enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed. And the fulfillment of that takes place in the creation of this woman in the womb of Saint Anne. Hannah in Hebrew means gift. Anne means gift. And the gift of God through this woman, Hannah, is Maria. Mara, it's a lady, the woman created in the gift of God of Anne. And so this fulfillment is mentioned in the second line, just before the reading of the Mazmura of the Musoyu, after the Kadisha. So that what we're celebrating today is the beginning of the renewal of creation by the creation of this woman. Man was created, Eve from Adam. Now we have the flipping of that fall. So that where Eve and Adam, the human race, collapse in paradise and bring the suffering and the shortcomings and the wounds that belong to all of us, so God creates without stain, without blemish, that's all that immaculate means. Makula means stain in Latin, possible, impossible, makula, immakula, unstained. Her creation, her conception is untarnished, unblemished, unstained. And this is the first human being created from the time of Adam and Eve, who is exactly what they are meant to be by grace, and by nature and by beauty. That's what we celebrate today in the Immaculate Conception. And why do we then choose this priesthood? Because the promise is made and the child who is conceived by the mother of the mother of God is the fulfillment of the ability for God, the divine world, to enter into time and by becoming man to exercise this priesthood, this recreation, this sanctification, and this offering. He is priest because of the mother of God, because of Mary of Nazareth. She is created in this unblemished and unstained state with nothing to do because of her. It's not because of her. Any more than any one of us had the ability to choose which family or what year we were born in. We're just, we appear. God creates us. And God creates Mary of Nazareth because of the Divine Son. God creates her in the merits of the work of redemption and the restoration of the human race. This woman is the masterpiece of all creation. Which is why, again, if you look at the hymn, or in the Husoyo, it talks about that she is our pride and our boast. She is the only human being to have entered the world unstained and to leave this world unstained. Adam and Eve screwed it up. They didn't finish their days unblemished in grace and in beauty and wisdom. None of us enter this world in beauty unblemished in beauty and grace. We are given by our baptism and by our faith this restoration. But this woman, this woman was created for the purpose of the restoration of humanity and she is so as this masterpiece because of her Divine Son. It's because of the fact that the Divine Son enters the world as man that he is priest and hence the reading of the Epistle. And I leave you with one last thought. There is only one priesthood in the New Testament. There is only one priest. 
there is only one sacrifice. And this death and resurrection of our Lord is what we come to be present at the altar, to be present not just simply by our Lord's substantial death and resurrection, the Divine Eucharist, but in the Eucharist it is Jesus Christ who offers this sacrifice. And in this sacrifice it is Jesus Christ who is offered in this sacrifice. And it is Jesus Christ whom we receive in Holy Communion. The man standing in front of you, just some guy, born wounded and blemished like everyone else, but having been consecrated into the one single priesthood. The man doesn't matter any more than this bottle of wine or that bottle of wine being used before the Eucharist has any importance. And so the men who are consecrated into the one priesthood are only vehicles of that one reality of his priesthood. Because there's only one priest in the New Testament. And that single priesthood was received by birth from the Blessed Virgin Mary, being made man. And therefore, that last thought that I leave you with is that on this day also, not only is her title as a Matthew Conception patroness of the United States of America, so pray for the country, but she is also, by this understanding of priesthood, it's the reason why she has a title, which all seminarians and priests will know, but you may not know. We call her Queen of the Clergy, because being the mother of the High Priest of the Eternal and New Testament, she is also then, by the men consecrated into that priesthood, she is mother of every priest, she is mother of the clergy, she is queen of the clergy by that connection. So hopefully after a long explanation, you have a reason to understand why this choice of this epistle of St. Paul, and take a few moments today before we start up again at 4 p.m. and read this chapter 7 to the Hebrews. It is profound, it is glorious, and we celebrate this masterpiece of the new creation because the good one has decided to bring us life and beauty fundamentally, radically, for all eternity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen.
Do this in memory of me each time you eat this bread and drink this cup. You remember my death until I come again. We remember your death, O Lord. We profess your resurrection. We await your second coming. We implore your mercy and compassion. We ask for the forgiveness of sins. May your mercy rest upon us. O Lord of God, who can comprehend that you willingly have emptied yourself of your divine glory, who can explain your miraculous birth from a virgin, who can repay you for your saving passion which you freely endured, who can praise your plan of salvation for us, we can only ask of you, O lover of all people, that the sacrifice which we have offered be accepted on your holy altar in heaven, the dwelling place of your hidden divinity in the company of all the angels and saints. Through this sacrifice may we be worthy of the forgiveness of all of our sins. When you come to judge the living and the dead, do not pass judgment upon us, nor deny us, saying, on that glorious and fearful day, do not separate us from you, nor cast us out from your paradise to a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. Rather, because of your holy name, by which we have been called, look with mercy upon us. In your compassion, you have made us worthy of the gift of your forgiving body and blood. So make us worthy to be one with you in holiness, as you are one with your Father. For this your church implores you, and through you, and with you, implores your Father, saying,
and grant them a long life. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord of goodness, your holy church, and have mercy on all her faithful. In your compassion, heal all the wounded and injured among your flock. Punish injustice and strengthen all our brothers and sisters. Bestow the grace of conversion on all. With your destructible power, strengthen the bishops of the true faith, that they may be upright and courageous in their apostolic office. May they show fidelity as they stand ever before your eternal justice. Unto your honor and glory, may they prove themselves upright, dauntless, and persevering in the task confided to them to lead all the faithful into the fullness of your redeeming light and glory. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and dejected, for orphans and widows, for the sick and distressed, for those tempted by evil spirits, be the guardian and refuge of their lives. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have Remember the Holy Fathers, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, and confessors, especially the holy, glory, and blessed ever Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. John the Baptist, the messenger and forerunner, who witnessed the betrothal of your holy church to your son. Glorious St. Stephen the Archdeacon and the first martyr, and all who pleased you and professed your name, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all the faithful departed who have gone to you from this altar and from every place throughout the world, grant them rest in your heavenly dwellings with all your sins, and in your mercy forgive our sins and theirs. Grant rest, O God, to the departed, and forgive the sins we have committed.
May we call upon you with the prayer that he taught his holy disciples and say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Yes, O merciful Lord, we ask for your compassion. By your grace, make us worthy, that your glorious name may be made holy in us, that your kingdom come to assist us in our weakness, and that your will dwell within us. Deliver us from all difficult temptations. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours with your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. And you are Bow your heads before the God of mercy, before his forgiving altar, and before the body and blood of our Savior, who gives life to those who partake of it, and receive the blessing of the Lord. O Lord God, you are good and the lover of all people. Look upon those who bow their heads before your majesty, and bless them with every spiritual blessing. Do not turn us away when we approach your divine and holy gifts. And let us not be guilty of unworthily receiving the body and blood of your only Son. Rather, make us worthy to share in your holy and life-giving mysteries of purity, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your good and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And the grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit. Let each one of us look to God with reverence and humility and ask Him for mercy and compassion. Holy gifts for the holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One, one Holy Father, one, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit. Spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you. 
Jesus, you have made us worthy to share in your holy body and in the cup of salvation. How can we repay you for these your gifts and graces and for your goodness? As you have called us to approach this life-giving banquet, make us worthy, so that your body may be mingled with our bodies and your blood with our souls for the pardon of faults, the forgiveness of sins, and eternal life. You are blessed and your kingdom is holy. We raise glory to you, to your Father, to your Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. 
and with your spirit. O God the Father, we bow before you and we entrust ourselves to your care. We ask you, imploring your mercy, to rest your right hand full of blessings upon us. Assist us, protect us, bless us, and sanctify us by the holy cross of your only Son. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever. Amen.